Hello, and welcome to this exciting ep episode of Satology Debunking Mythology. Satology means science of truth, the study of truth, and opposite that is mythology. And I have a very special guest with me, a chief, Angel Sanchez Reyes, from the San Diego, from San Diego. And it's a great honor to be with him. And I'm going to speak with him. A little bit of pleasure is mine. <laughs> It's, it's, it's so rare to get an audience with a person like you. Thank you, Adi. The pleasure is ours as well to have you in our home and to, uh, you know, speak of your experiences and to share our experiences of the tribe with you and your audience. We uh, want to thank you in advance for that, for the opportunity most, uh, most importantly. You know, I feel so much at home in this place because of the, uh, the environment you have, the material that you've used. Thank and you. It looks like uh, going back to a very traditional home. Uh, a lot of stuff you see has been uh, we have has been handcrafted by my wife or myself, and uh, uh, we our home is the embassy for the tribe, and uh, and we've been blessed to have this old adobe home because it has so much character, and it has uh, given us so much love, and uh, when people come in here, they share and feel what we felt when we first saw this place. And the love continues uh, uh, through these walls and outside the, and also outside of the walls. So we've been blessed with this place. So there are many things I come to know from the last discussion, that you are a U.S. Armed Forces veteran? Yes, I was the United States Army, was a drill sergeant. Uh, my MOS was uh, 26 Michael, was a radar technician. And then I was a drill sergeant for a few years, and then uh, so I kind of my whole military career was based on on infantry, which is something that I really like. I guess that the warrior in us that we have, we have to be in that. So I uh, really enjoyed that part of my life at the time. So when I met you first time, and you told me about your connections with Geronimo. Geronimo, uh, I'm a descendant of Geronimo, and. Um, and we're uh, over uh, Chiricahua. We represent the, I'm the chief of the Indi Apache tribe, and uh, and I'm from the Bankahe clan. And so, uh, uh, so when you mentioned that Geronimo, and I've written about at least two paragraphs on him in my book Gold to Rain God, and I was really fascinated, mm. really, really fascinated because uh, it's like the I've been talking to many people, searching, and somehow or the other I could not meet any chief. And, uh, and suddenly through Jeffrey, our friend, and, uh, and uh, he connected us to Andrew, mm. and now we are speaking with you. Thank you. So what do you want to tell audience about Geronimo? Uh, well, uh, he had a, a, a legacy that, uh, that is unquestionable. Uh, he went through a lot of suffering when the, uh, the, the Spanish or the Mexican federales uh, took out the village where his children and his wife and his mother were residing. And he was uh, a medicine man. Geronimo was never a chief. He was always a medicine man. His father was Teclashim and his mother was Juanita. And, uh, and unfortunately, when the Mexican federales came in and destroyed his family, um, he vowed to get back even with, the, with uh, the people that killed his family, and he did. And uh, that went on for many years. And Geronimo was never captured, he surrendered. Uh, he broke out of San Carlos Reservation a few times because um, Geronimo said when, uh, when, uh, when San Carlos was created, that the creator forgot to put his hand on it because uh, San Carlos is so there's no, you can't grow nothing. Uh, there's not much you could do. It's a, it's, it's a desert. It's like 117 degrees. So that's one of the reasons he escaped. Um, we are originally from, uh, from Mexico. That was before the Americas were Americas. And, uh, and our, our territories were Sonora, Zacatecas, Juarez. The chief at the time was Mangas Coloradas. And um, so uh, during, during the time that Geronimo went through what he went through, uh, Mangas Colorados got 
uh, uh, Cochise, uh, uh, Geronimo, Victorio, to get the people out because they were getting massacred uh, from, uh, from the federales because they wanted their territory, the Mexican uh, federales or the Mexican uh, uh, government wanted the territory. So they left, they had to, or else they would have been destroyed. So Geronimo had to fight two wars. He had to fight the Mexi uh, against the Mexican government and also against the uh, American government. In 1846, 47, uh, during the time when, uh, at the time it was President Polk and uh, the first president of Mexico was Santana, before that he was a general, um, they, the, uh, uh, the California was sold in 1850 for 3.6 million, I believe. And that's when they put the division. So a lot of the, uh, the, the, a lot of the Apaches and natives had to stay on that side of the border. And the ones that were on this side of the border during uh, uh, Mexico's occupation, we stayed on this side. And uh, there's a treaty between Mexico and and uh, and the Apaches that they were able to stay under under territory in Mexico, and we have our treaties here uh, in the United States. But the difference is they have territories over there. We have reservations here, which is not really uh, a nice. The reservations are. I don't know if you've ever been to the reservations, but they're really. It's a sad situation for the native people. So what we do as um, as a tribe, the end Apache tribe, we work with all the tribes, and what we do is we, uh, we also work with our with our community. It's not a tribal thing; it's a tribal community thing because we're trying to get people to understand our way of living, and we're trying to uh, uh, get. Uh, the outside people from the reservation to, un or vice versa. We have to understand each other and work together and move forward together and get the stigma out of the way. Because that's the only way we're going to improve. Uh, whether you're in the reservation or out of the reservation, whether you're native or not, is moving forward together and, uh, and accomplishing things together as a people, not just a separ a separate and separating everybody like, like what they did to us. They put us on reservations. They, uh, we had treaties that weren't honored. A lot of our people have uh, have uh, suffered and still are. Uh, San Carlos is one. Pine Ridge is another one where it's just sad when you go over there. Uh, uh, San Carlos, uh, there's a fire over there going on, so we're having to get close to send them over there. They can't drink the water because the water's been laced with Agent Orange. So people have to walk miles, miles, to go get drinking water, bottled water. Why? Because they can't afford a car. And if they could, they can't leave the reservation because they can't afford the fuel or the registrations for the vehicles. So you see families, big groups of families, walking to get food, walking to go get water because they don't have, they don't have. And that's in the USA. That's in the United that States. That is the richest country in the world. Mm -hmm. And we've been there, uh, my wife and I, and it's sad. And uh, to see little children, uh, you know, uh, uh, mis uh, 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 very bad nourished, uh, you know, looking for water, looking for something to eat. And it's worse than a third world country in these reservations. So we as a, as, a, as a native group are trying to get more involved, not just us, but with our communities at large. You know, we're asking our communities to help us with donations, with clothes, furniture, whatever we could get so we could send uh, uh, these uh, articles to these people. Right now, we're in the group in Pine Ridge. It's a football camp, and we just how made far is that from here? It's in North Dakota. North Dakota. Mm -hmm. And then San Carlos is in uh, Arizona. That's at the reservation. So uh, we just made some T-shirts for the kids for uh, the, that program football, because we're we have we're trying to uh, what we're doing is uh, and this is Andrew our advisor. So what we do is we're raising money so for scholarships. We're raising money to help families in need. We're raising money for uh, clothing, food, whatever we could help. We're willing to do that. And again, you don't have to be native. If you're in need, we'll help you. Indians are native. 
That's right. That's right. You are. We are all natives, 100% natives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never left our culture, religion, or Well, language. they call us Indians because uh, one of our conquistadors, Christopher Columbus, thought he was in India. Correct. So the name in, uh, Indian stuck with us, but we're not Indian, we're natives. You know, but we're okay with it. We're okay with it. <laughs> I, I, was, I was looking at the internet and they said that you prefer American Indian as a better word than native. Uh, yes, because what well, see that we've been uh, talking about that because see the government has always separated us. You got uh, you got uh, Mexican American, Asian American, uh, uh, Indian American, Native American, and see that has to change because sure. we're Americans first. Exactly. So what's wrong with uh, American? Uh, but then you'll, only uh, you will be remaining after that, only right? Because you're the only American well, here. Right, well, yeah, but they're they, settlers and <laughs> everybody else. So, and we're American first. I, we served our country. We're still here. We're helping people. So, I think they should change the narrative and stop. Get, don't put where your ancestors came from first. Say, uh, uh, you know, Asian, uh, American, Asian, uh, American, uh, Black or African, uh, American Native. American Indian, American Hispanic, put American first if yes. you're from the from this country. Now, if you're from a different country, I could understand that. But as an American, do as Americans do, and honor the fact that we are Americans first, sure. and, and don't don't put us in a second or third category. That's disrespectful. Just to give a explanation to uh, for the audience for you oh. for these audience. So, what does actually reservation mean? I'm sorry? What does reservation mean? Reservation means that um, the government has uh, selected a piece of land for the people to live on. And it's a reserve. And that reserve is assigned solely for the people that were chosen to live on that land that was chosen by the federal government. And the federal and the 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 the, uh, the lands are monitored by the BIA, which is the Bureau of Indian Affairs, and also the BLM, which is the Bureau of Land Management. So there's only so much that people could do under under those standards, and we're not we're not affiliated with the BIA or the BLM, but uh, there is some guidelines that they have to follow as a people living on the reservation. So, like when we read the American history books. And people do check out my book, Gold, Glory, and God, also. Uh, if you, because I've written the history from an Indian perspective. Mm. But they're searching for Indian, and so Indian has to write their history, too. There you go. So it's my responsibility to put a second version of the truth, also. It's a their version of truth, a different version of truth. Now, I regularly read passages, the 13 colonies pushing south mm. and east and pushing them into reservations. So my idea of reservation was, I, and I know the way you have put it, and uh, audience, I'm going to show you a beautiful long bow right in the back. And uh, so the, so the pushing into reservation. So do, doesn't reservation sound like a jail? It is a prison. It's a, kind of like a prison camp. It, it really is. Uh, only difference is that you don't have barbed wire around the camp, but uh, people come and go if they can. But a lot of them don't because that's the only life they know. So a lot of people are afraid to come out. It's like once, you, once you're used to living in a certain condition, it's hard to break that stigma. And uh, that's one of the problems that we're not having. Well, yeah, we are having. People are afraid to walk out of that situation because that's all they know. All they know, uh, you, give, you give somebody you know, crackers all day long, that's all, they do, that's all they're going to eat. You give them a piece of meat or something, they don't know what to do with it. It's the same situation. I know it's a bad analogy, but it's pretty much uh, uh, simple and kind of like that. Um, the reservations are, are, were designed uh, uh, back in the 1700s and 1800s to control um, our people because of the wars that were going on. So to the point where they even shipped uh, a lot of Apaches to Florida. And it didn't, it didn't go very well because of the conditions in Florida. It was very humid, and those conditions almost killed Apache people. And that's when they moved them back to uh, Fort Sills, Oklahoma. The people wanted to go back to New Mexico 
in Arizona where they came from, but they weren't allowed to. They had to stay at Fort Sills, Oklahoma, because that's where they were. They were, again, held. Geronimo was a free Apache. He never, he never was captured. He, was, he surrendered, and he used to come and go as he wanted. Uh, what killed him was hypothermia. He was riding a horse, he bumped his head, and in the following days his, ne his nephew found him, and uh, six days later he died from hypothermia. Uh, but the, the Apache people have a very interesting uh, story because they've suffered a lot under, under uh, a lot of different rules, not just the Mexican rules, but the uh, United States rules. Native Americans have covered, the, I mean, the whole country, the the the, the Hachiman, uh, they're they're a coastal uh, group. Uh, they've been around for over nine thousand years, yes. and uh, we have a lot of groups that are. Ojibwe, Ojibwe in the north is too. Hmm? Ojibwe. That's right. In the north is the I main, the first five nations. Yes. The first five nations, and then, uh, and, and I I was it was fascinating. Before I come there, because I know, impossible to cover conversation just one video. Uh, you said about Bureau of Indian Affairs, and many of the viewers may not know. The BIA? Mm -hmm. BIA. So what is the purpose of BIA, and, and is it a government body or a quasi-government body? It's, uh, uh, the BIA is a, is a, um, is a bureau that um, monitors the, uh, uh, the reservations. And uh, what they do is they make sure that they're following the rules and regulations that were imposed by the BIA. And uh, the BLM is a Bureau of Land Management. They're the ones that have control of the land, which is the reservation. Mm -hmm. so, so like these are, so what is their current role? I and mean, they do they disperse federal funding? Uh, there is a very famous, I have been calling him on social media, Dr. Chapman. Mm -hmm. And uh, he writes a lot, and, and there is also Amber Elk on social media also. He, she also writes a lot. And I, and I follow those handles, and they also follow me on social media. And one of the interesting things they were saying, that uh, the BI, because most of the world thinks that Native Americans were paid handsomely by the government, until now mm -hmm. they are being paid millions of dollars, and everyone is rich. And this is what comes out. It, it's almost like a, it's almost like a uh, like a form of welfare, and and, and that's to put it at best. Okay, that's to put it at best. But um, if you think you're gonna uh, uh, better yourself on, on on that kind of a system, you're not. You're barely gonna make it. Barely gonna get by. I don't know anybody in the reservation that's doing very well. I know the opposite because I've seen it with my own eyes. Uh, again, they can't even afford cars. They can't. There's a lot of things. If you go to San Carlos, they're living, and this and this is uh, they're federally recognized. They live on the reservation, and um, they live in, in galvanized buildings. They live in trailers. They live in uh, containers. Uh, they don't have television because they don't have internet. There's no signals out there. So you going back? Wow, a long time because they're living in a very primitive situation. It's so shocking for many of the viewers to know, because they often uh, the the Western countries brand Mexico is third world country, right. Cuba is third world country, India is third world country, but now we know the third world what they defined as third world because nobody knows third world. Every country thinks of themselves as first world. Right. Well, yeah. It, they naturally you should think that way, but the the international classification which is dominated by us Americans and right. British exactly is brandishes of the people, but within the country, we have such poor conditions here. Uh, when they colonized this country, the the Spanish and the English, and they took over the land, uh, we we, uh, we entrusted the people that came. We opened up our hearts and our arms for the people. We welcomed them, but then everything changed after they. They deceived the people. They took the gold. They took their natural resources, and uh, they enslaved. Uh, they raped. They killed. They did so many things, and yet, for what? What do the people get out of all this besides losing their homes, losing their land? Just like if you go back to the South, uh, during Andrew Jackson's administration, 
because before Andrew Jackson was a Republican Democratic Party, but when Andrew Jackson came in because of Lincoln, Lincoln was the one that freed the blacks, and he was a Republican. Uh, uh, Lincoln. First Republican president. Yes, first Republican Lincoln. Sixteen president. And then Andrew Jackson separated the parties to Republican and Democrat. Well, in order to get back for the days of the slavery, uh, Andrew Jackson, a lot of natives won't even take a $20 bill from you because of Andrew Jackson's face on it. Because Andrew Jackson ordered all the people in the South, natives and blacks, to leave the whole southern region and took, took their, their, their land from them. Why? Because he, what he enforced was plantations cotton plantations. That's what happened to the people's territory. It became a plantation. And he kept the people that could work it, which were your blacks and your strong Indians. The rest of the people had to go through what we know today as the Trails of Tears. Mm -hmm. the, they call it the Trails of Tears not because we were crying. We, we, we had to march those down those trails. The people that saw these people dying on the road were the ones that are crying for what happened to them. They lost their homes, they lost their territory. Those are the things that people had to endure. And the reservation, well, that's where they ended up going. So the, the, the BLM, you said, the Bureau of Land Management. Mm -hmm. So what is their current role today? Uh, I don't know what the current rule is, so I don't want to say, uh, say, yeah. But I saw a program uh, on one of the reservations where the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management, had full control of the land. So if you own a home, you own it, but they own the land. Mm. So if you want, if you want to, uh, if, if something happens on the reservation and you're asked to leave, you can't take your home, they keep the home. So uh, there's, I don't know what the real rules are because I, I don't involve myself with them. It's just those things that I have heard. So if I uh, may ask you one question on, on uh, the history side, going back to the history. So how many tribes would be active in the U.S.? You are chief of one tribe. Mm -hmm. And the, how many chiefs would be there today? Oh, there's how many, you think, Andrew? 574 federally recognized tribes, but there's double that that are unrecognized. That unrecognized, which the other, they're solvent. So mostly around 1,000, 1,500, right. mm -hmm. 1,500 plus. Right. And, the, and the languages which I was studying, there were around 1,500 languages spoken mm -hmm. in the U.S. Correct. until 1908. And uh, after 1908, it changed because of imposition of real democracy, mm -hmm. where in 1924, Native Americans were allowed, were given citizenship of U.S. Uh, yes, because uh, they, they tr we, 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 they, we had to assimilate with the, the standards and the rules of, the, of this country, our country. And cutting our hair, uh, destroying our language, we couldn't speak our language. Uh, we had to dress uh, accordingly. We couldn't use our regalia, our way of dressing. Uh, we, were, we were punished if we didn't. And that was, like you said, as early as the, the 1900s. So, so what is the, you know... You give me so many points to know. I'm learning also. For the viewers along with you, I'm also learning. Uh, so the, what is the tradition of keeping long hairs? What is the tradition? It's, uh, our tradition of having long hair is something that we, uh, we have. It's, a, it's more of a spiritual thing for us to have long hair. Because it shows who we are as Native Americans. But it also shows that we are people of peace and harmony. Uh, so the, our long hair signifies who we are and everything about who we are. And and the is there any, any regulation of? Uh, the, I went to the Washington D.C. Uh, history, American history, and I saw many of the important artifacts shown as a prize for people to learn. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a good museum, but uh, a living culture putting in a museum doesn't make sense. Right. But, uh, it's still living. Everything is still living. And I saw that. Uh, so, and the information which I gathered from the museum was that this culture is over. Now, the culture has changed. 
so and there is a very interesting fight between the culture and religion so what they assumed the church assumed that the natives had no religion that's not true mm. because they had sacred places to go to they had uh, sacred moon nights they had sacred solstice days these are all part of the religion of the native americans so how how do you define the the today's religion being practiced by the natives as per their own culture um well again like you said about the long hair it's uh is strength po- uh, strength power and a spirit spirituality so that falls into what you just asked me our spirituality because we are christians but we also have our beliefs uh we have our beliefs uh, uh on the, our native religion which is giving thanks to mother nature giving thanks to the uh, uh to our creator for creating everything that he gave us it's uh, and we and we are the caretakers of of uh of our land we make sure, we make sure everything works in in harmony and in balance we're christians because that's what we were taught i'm catholic but also practice my my uh my native uh uh, uh, uh religion if you want to call it that mm-hmm. or belief i'm also a chaplain so i'm a chaplain because a lot of our indigenous people don't have a, a nomination so i'm a chaplain to marry our people mm-hmm. because uh they don't have a religion they might not be christian they might be whatever so i come in and i marry our citizens the traditional way which is the native way Thank you so much for coming on the show today. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I'm in your home. I'm in your home. Thank and you. and explain a little bit basic and I would like to continue this conversation anytime. And uh, you and know where I live. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. You're always Thank welcome. You. So so the viewers is chief angel from the from the Apache community and uh, this is our first interview and we will see a series of interviews. understanding the native american culture first hand and religion first hand and also the history uh, so we touch upon very various points so do let me know comment on it and i would love to see your feedback on this video thank you thank you and aish god bless you all